Oh, hello, hello, hello! My friends, Scotty J here, back again with another episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, and Nine Doors. Now, last time, we tried to retrace our steps and went through door number five instead of door four, where we hung out with Seven and Snake. We uh, went through the first class cabin, a casino. Uh, I can't really say we picked up too much else, other than Seven left the door open to the first class cabin so we could get back in. But that was really about it. Nothing too crazy. Um, now we bet up with the other group and we have jumped ahead again to where we are going between doors seven and eight. At this point, Snake has disappeared and Ace just knocked himself out with some soparil. So we're here with Santa. Lotus is picked door eight, seven is picked door seven, and now it is our turn. Let's begin. All right, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last. Junpei's mind was already made up. We can either do door three, seven, or eight. Now, uh, for those who don't want to do the math, uh, going through door three means that the other group can't go through seven or eight, so you pretty much have to go through door seven. I I think we're going to go with door seven. Okay, door seven it is. Yeah. All right, that means June's got to go through door eight. What? Why? Huh? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Plan A. Go through seven with three, five, and eight, and go through eight with four, six, and seven. Plan B. Go through seven with four, five, and seven, and go through eight with three, six, and eight. Or plan C. Go through seven with three, six, seven, and go through eight with four, five, and eight. And that's it. Those are our only options. In other words, three and four, seven and eight, and five and six can never go through the same door. You get it now? As Santa finished, Chun looked over at Junpei, tears welling up in the corners of her eyes. Oh no. You're, you're saying we're not going to see each other again for a long time? Junpei felt just as Jun did, but he wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing for. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June, and he was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on, you're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We got it split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went through doors four and five, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah. Probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was Seven that interjected. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't connect, neither team can go through door nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far, so I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through door nine. June said nothing. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost impersonable nod. Yes, promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice, however, shattered the moment. Yawn! You guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than, dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. Alright, we're ready to go then. Let's move! At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walked towards door seven. Santa, Lotus, and June headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the doors. Seven took a deep breath. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. Ooh, it's opening. 
The door had opened. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in their bracelets had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he, he stopped. He looked to his right, towards door eight. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked towards him. Their eyes met. They nodded. Their farewell took almost a second and a half. Then someone took hold of Junpei's arm and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left! No time to waste, guys! Let's get moving! Seven led the way down the hallway. Jupe and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of a wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest, though, or catch their breaths. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel of the dead. Ooh. Ugh. Ooh. <laughs> Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It, it stopped. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of those numbered doors, but oh, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some sweat from his neck and head. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again. I dare you. You have no... You little... You want to die? I'd like to see you try, you fucking brat. All right, let's go. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for whatever the hell this is. It's not going to do us any good. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Jinpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a moment, all right? I'm going to go see if there's any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei was not in the mood for conversation anyway. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single short hallway that terminated almost immediately at the thick iron wall. Junpei doubted that the wall could be moved. At last he gave up and returned to the se and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door is the only option we got, right? Yeah, it looks like it. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. It read, Operating Room. If it was to be believed, the room on the other side of the door was an operating room. Something about it made Junpei feel nervous, however. Well, there's no point in standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first steps into the room. Seven followed him, with Clover right behind. Part of the room, just past the door, was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Ah! Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran towards Clover to see what had frightened her. They rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. What? What the hell is this? Is this a corpse? It was something that looked kind of like a human laying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed. An operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. Slowly, they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. What? What the hell? It's just a huge doll or something? A, a doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked as intently as possible, from as far away as possible, at the thing. Phew. Junpei could see her relax. 
You're, you're right. It's, it's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had me, balls. Shut it. Don't you start with me, fatty. Oh, what is this? You want a piece of me short stuff? Yeah, bring it on, you whale. Hey, guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. Hmm. Hmm. Shinpei sighed and shook his head. Anyways, it looks like he's got something the two of you could stand to have a little more of right now. Talk about a heart. Huh? Oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher than normal for a human body. For the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt. It was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. I think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Maybe it's got more, uh, personal uses. Seven's grin was more than just a little perverted. Clover glared at him. Anyways, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. There's so many places to look, apparently. Bum, dum, dum, dum. All right, let's see what Groovy Tune awaits us. Oh, this is pretty groovy. I can down. I'm down with this. Anyway, so welcome to the operating room. So this is actually a little bigger than shown. There's actually a space over here and a space over here. But we'll need to unlock those doors first. So let's have some fun in the operating room. Hey, I wonder what this thing is. It says keg on this display. Oh, uh, you think maybe it's a scale? Yeah. Mm, these dolls are really kind of creepy, you know? Hey, it says something here. John? You think that's this doll's name? Maybe. This thing is creepy. I wonder if why it's on the bed. That's a good question. I, I too wonder. Let's swirl around a little, shall we? Oh, hey! Kosher forceps. Cool. Nothing else really on the table, though. It's a bunch of surgical tools. Alright, nothing else really on the table. How about over here? Oh, hello there. This bed doesn't look very comfortable. You're right. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Uh, another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. She has a name, too. Hmm, Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather her other parts? Maybe. Uh, what's this thing? It's got those short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater? There's nothing inside of it, though. Hmm. Hey, oh, A fake chest. Excellent. Hmm, maybe you're supposed to heat something, like the gauze to kill the bacteria? There's a boiling thingy over there, too. Uh, nothing on the lid or in the drawers, though. Look at all these medicines. There's a bunch of bottles on the shelves. They look like medicine. They got labels, but they're all big medical words that I just don't understand. There's a lot of different kinds of medication. It's hard to tell them apart. Hmm, the drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing there. Well, all right. I'm still just grooving to this track, by the way. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I'll get back to it. Oh, there's a scalpel. Scalpel. All right, um... Anything in here? Aren't you creepy? Hey, we got the fake organ! Oh, it looks like we had to use the forceps to get it. Okay. Let us combine the fake organ with the scalpel, maybe? Search it, why not? Hmm, so we took the organ out of the thingy with the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back, it's all rubbery. Hey, you're right. So it's a fake organ, of course it'd be. Wait, what's Seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like there's something in here. You think we can cut through the rubber part? I think we can. Oops. There we go. Combine. Please combine. Let's try cutting the organ with the scalpel. Hey, we got an organ key. Uh-oh. Who's got a key large and in charge ready to roll? Let's go this way. Aha. It's a chemical closet. Let's check it out. Awesome, it unlocked. Woohoo. Oh my goodness, look at all of these chemicals. So many chemicals. Hey. 
Oh, we got some blue liquid. And some red liquid. Oh, what's this here? Oh, there's a note on top of the table. Iron is one, salt is two, water is three. Carbon dioxide is a question mark. Ammonia is also a question mark. And ethanol is a question mark. Hmm, what do you think this hint is for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box? Yeah, maybe. So I assume it's a password of sorts? So let's see if we can learn anything about the pieces. What's this? Uh, it looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide? Okay, good to know. Hey, Junpei! This, <laughs> my goodness. Diohydrin and monoxide on the shelf! Why wouldn't you just say water? <laughs> oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H5OH, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is. So, you're gonna drink it? Hmm. Hmm? Nah, I won't. It might say that's what's on the label, but there could be anything in there. Get the note. Hmm? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. Ah, uh, of course it stinks. It's ammonia. Oh, okay. So we're getting the chemical, or the, the compound bits for all of these. Let's see here. Hey Junpei, you think there's any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. What is she pointing at? Oh, the label, label says NHCL. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put it on him? Hey! You say something? Might. Totally might, though. Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says Fe. Fe stands for iron, right? Okay, so we've now seen a bunch of different components. Let's read the sheet again. Oh, rectangular table. Oh, and do people mix medicines on this thing? Hmm, hmm. Alright, so reading the note, iron is one, salt is two, water is three. Now, from what we saw earlier, it's fe is iron, so that's the one. NH NACL is two, um, so that's only got two compounds, so it's two. Uh, H2O is water, woo, uh, that's three. So now then, for the rest, carbon dioxide, which is CO2, is three. Ammonia was NH3, so that is four. And then ethanol was like C2H5OH, so that's nine. So I think our code then would be one, two, three, three, four, nine? Well, look at the first line. Maybe the question mark represents a number. This thing won't open. Is it locked? You probably need to put in a passcode. I mean, geez, they even got a keypad on there. How much more obvious can you get? I can only enter three numbers. E is for enter and C is for clear. Once you input the number, press E, and if you mess up, press C. Let's give it a shot. All right, so our guess is it's three, four, nine, enter. Hey, we did it. We got a fake right arm and a hot. Nice, good old fake hot. Well, sweet, I think we did everything we need to do in this room. You think we should go back? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Jimmy was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well. He looked up at Junpei distractedly, and then went back to hound at the bot brown bottle he had cupped in his large hands. What's that? In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. <laughs> Ethylene Timine Tart Titrate? EDT. It's titrate ethadinaline. What kind of medicine is that? It's not a medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that on here? Oh, well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still. Looks like it's been clean, clean my brain up. Junpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT, at least. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. They're making it to sell as industrial strength cleaners, like I told you. 
but... A year after the factory started up, something started strange happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. They made them some sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystal turns into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory just had to dump the crystals. As a hydrate, of course, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening to EDT factories everywhere. Even ones nowhere near the first American factory. They've been making crystals the same way, with the same materials, and the same equipment and environment, but now all of a sudden, every single crystal formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make pure EDT crystals. Even in EDT research done before that, they never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man, how do you say it? You mean like it was infected with a virus or something? Seven shook his head. No, not like that. It spread like wildfire. It showed up in labs that were completely isolated from the rest of the world. It started happening to crystals that were completely sealed up. It didn't even seem like it could have been a result of stuff coming in contact with other samples. Then... Well, I guess it is some sort of information? Like the crystals were transmitting this information all across the world somehow. What information? How to make a new crystal, I guess. Something had to tell the stuff how to do it, right? Like it just whispered to the EDT in the tank? Hey, if you do this, you can take in water molecules. Hey, come on, man, that's just... I mean, who is this someone anyway? Someone you can't see. Someone who exists all over the world. You mean like a god? Or maybe the devil. Seven grinned. And she maybe was trying to figure out what on earth was go he was going to say next. Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here. Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez. Seven looked around Junpei. Yeah, so anyway, that's the story. It might be useful information someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left to ponder what he'd just heard. Information being transmitted invisibly? Could such a thing really happen? Hmm. Hmm. Well, thinking about that crap isn't going to help me right now. We need to figure out how to get the hell out of here first. He took a deep breath, tried to clear his mind, and followed after Seven. Woohoo! Back to the groovy track. Let's go this way now. I think this key is good for both doors. Oh, gotta have the key up, though. Goodness. Ah, oh, cool! It unlocked! Alright, let's roll down this hallway. Oh, hey, there's three lockers. A sink. The doctors and nurses probably washed their hands before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. We got some lockers. Oh, hey, there's a whole doohick thing here. Ooh, a fake chest. You don't need that. Let's put some blue liquid in here. And then we turn on a light. Hey, the blue liquid turned on. I heard a noise. It sounds like something unlocked. Sweet. Beaker with blue liquid in it. Makes the light that passes through it blue. Uh, what about a red liquid? Mm, let's put the red liquid in next. That means the blue liquid is going back in the bottle for now. Hey, now we got the red light. Hey, it turned red! Forget about that. Didn't you hear just now? And now then... Put the blue liquid in. And we have purple liquid. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. The purple light turned on. Right when it did that, I heard a noise. What do you think it was? That sound came from somewhere close by. Something in the room must have changed. Alright, let's take a look. It was, obviously, these lovely lockers we're seeing right here. So with the red one, we can get this leg. Woohoo! With the blue one, another leg. And finally, a fake stomach. Excellent. I think that's... All we really gotta do here? Anything I'm doing here? Oh, hey, look at that! Let's see if... Huh, a piece of paper. What's this? Some kind of medical record? New material's been added to the file screen! Oh, boy! I guess we'll look at the file screen quick. Uh, medical record. Sweet! So, John and Lucy. 51.3 kilograms and 53.2 kilograms. 
Oh, and it kind of tells us the weight of each section, it looks like. Interesting. Well, all right. Pop back on over here. Oh, let's talk to Lucy. Hello, dear Lucy. An old hard bed. That's fair. Okay. We collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agree. All right, then let's get started. Combine! <laughs> oh, Junpei, you nerd. Oh, there's a number on here. 51 kilograms. What's this? Is this a weight? Well, you're we just stacking body parts on it, so it makes sense that it'd be a weight. Hey, nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Wait? Yeah, well, you know that there's a scale on the side of the bed. Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number? How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap her body parts with John's. Oh. Let's give it a shot. Operating instructions. The screen below is to space two medical mannequins. You can switch their parts by touching the part you want to switch out. And then the part you want to switch in. Very nice. All right, well, let's have fun. Uh, so I think if we do... Oh, so we need to get them to be their weights. So let's swap, swap, swap. Uh-huh, swap everything. Hey, look at that, everything but the heart, apparently. Hey, Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. We best. Let's go check it out. But first, I'm gonna groove to this track a little more. Buena na. Huh? The lid on the scale. Hey, we got a key. It opened. Oh, I get it. it must open because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Woohoo! A Jupiter key. Let's go. All right. If we bail on out of here, then I think that's all we gotta do. So let's go. Through the door, through this door, to the Jupiter key lock. Hey, hold on. Jupe stopped. Let's put the key into the doorknob. What's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Jupe turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Oh, God damn it! Where the hell did she go? Uh, okay, just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Jupe left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her, standing next to the operating table. She's staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. Mm. She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, she might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? It wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh, though. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps there was something he'd said, or perhaps it was something else? Suddenly her mouth opened, and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother might be dead. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm gonna be next. Suddenly the operating room felt very, very cold. Wh what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. We've got the key, let's use it. That's cool with you? Clover nodded, almost imperceptibly. Still, Jupe was glad to see she at least was somewhat responsive. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As they arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I I'm sorry. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Jumbe wasn't quite sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because of her brother had gone missing? I'm I'm really, really sorry. Just forget everything I told you, okay? Don't worry about it. Really, I mean it. How could anyone pretend not to hear something like that? But something told him it wasn't the time to press the issue. Jupe gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. All right. Th thank you. Her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Damn. 
the hell took you guys so long? Seven looked up as they walked in the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor in there or something? Maybe. Jealous? Seven avoided answering the question. They stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. All right, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? Heh, <laughs> fine. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. it he felt it unlock. Woohoo! The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door, and that was it. All right, let's get going. Hey, man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy? You know, like, get a little excited. Hmm. No, not really. Chibi turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that that her brother was probably dead, and she was likely to follow him. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that? <laughs> that you found it does actually feel a little hollow right now. Not cool, man. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors, but they were all locked. Until at last. The final door was hidden in a corner of the hall. Junpei grabbed the handle. As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. The voice came from behind him, and belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. Jumpy! He spun around. Well, and, as last time, this is where we will leave off, I think. Uh, once again, we're now going to meet up with the rest of the group and continue on towards our next group of doors. So, hey, hopefully you enjoyed our time in the operating room, hanging out with Seven and... Our very disturbed friend Clover. Hopefully that gets resolved. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out today, guys. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.